Well, good afternoon, everyone. Good morning for those of you joining us from the West Coast. I'm going to give people about 30 seconds or so here just to make their way into the room. But thank you all for taking the time and joining us and learn a little bit more. Excellent. We're going to give about 15 more seconds or so. Let's make sure we can get as many people in the room here as we can before we launch into the program. All right, excellent. Looks like we've got a good chunk of the folks who registered for today. So um, thank you all for joining us again. Um, as you know from the other events, my name is Anthony. I'm the director of admission here at Emory Law. Uh, excited to have you join us for today's event in our Explore Emory series. We're going to be talking a little bit more about housing, uh, you know, some resources you have available for finding uh, uh, either a room in a house or an apartment or um, some situation that benefits and matches with your lifestyle, your budget. If you want roommates, you don't want roommates. So um, we will have a, a great discussion today. Um, I'm joined by one of our partners, um, Tiffany Crosby, uh, who's going to be walking you through our uh, off-campus housing uh, system and show you exactly how to navigate all of that uh, and all of the resources that you'll have available. We'll, of course, be sending this information in an email with the link to the website, uh, as well as some of our housing guides as well. So um, you'll get all that information over email, but hopefully you'll find today uh, pretty informative and a good way to um, you know, really navigate that system. So um, we appreciate you all uh, joining us. If you're able to this evening as well, we'll also be hosting another one of our alumni hangouts for the Florida market. So if you have any interest in working in Florida uh, after graduation, uh, join us for that. It'll be at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, so we hope to, to see you there as well. And then tomorrow we're gonna have a great session on our Barton Clinic, uh, which is a great opportunity for you all if you have any interest in family and juvenile law uh, and legislative advocacy. It's a really great program and, and clinic over there. So I hope to see you for, for both of those sessions as well to wrap up our week. But for today, like I said, we're going to talk a little bit about housing. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to Tiffany uh, and have her walk you through all of the housing options that you have. Great. Thanks, Anthony. I really appreciate the introduction. Um, I am, hi everyone, my name is Tiffany Crosby. I am the Director of University Initiatives at Off-Campus Partners. We host um, Emory's Off-Campus Housing website um, and provide support uh, for you as you're moving, uh, as you're looking at options, thinking about where you might live in Atlanta. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen and we're just gonna walk through um, a demo of the website and how all the features and functionality and how to really start um, that search process to find um, something that would meet your specific needs. So I'm going to share my screen and then we'll we'll dive right in. All right. So um, landing on the homepage here. So the website is offcampushousing.emory.edu. And um, as you get here, you'll notice that we've got a variety of high level information and announcements. Um, we do have an upcoming off-campus housing fair. And um, if there are other events that we have, um, it will also show here um, that you are welcome to attend um, to help further support you as you're looking at options. And then as you scroll down, you'll see this is where um, you'll see a preview of some of the listings that are included on the website. But um, I'm going to take you through, uh, before we get into that, how to sign up. Um, and then the process on narrowing down some housing options, uh, looking for roommates and uh, additional educational resources that can be of assistance to you. So when you go to the website, um, you are able to sign up for an account. Um, and so um, you are able to sign up for a guest account to search the off-campus housing website. Once you have your emory.edu um, email address, you can also register as a student and um, you will be able then to have full access to the website. So that will include not just the housing section, but our roommates um, and educational resources. So um, as you have that information, you'll be able to fully access the website um, to start your housing search. 
So starting on the housing page, this is really going to be where you um, start to narrow down options uh, that you might be interested in based on a variety of criteria. So we do um, have a map here where you can filter down your results and actually see where properties are in relation to campus. Um, and, but we also have this grid-based search as well here on the right-hand side so you can see um, high-level information about listings. So when you're starting your search, um, you are able to narrow down by a particular neighborhood if you know specifically where you're looking to live. Um, you can narrow down listings uh, within that specific neighborhood. Um, you can narrow down by price as well. So depending on um, the price range that you're looking for, you can update your search results based on that, whether it's a per bedroom or per unit price, the number of beds and baths that you're looking for, as well as building type. So um, obviously there's gonna be a variety of apartment communities listed on the website, but we do have a variety of independent owners that are listing who might have a house or a townhouse or a duplex. Um, that's available as well. There's also going to be shared situations if you're looking for um, that type of um, living situation. So this is going to allow you to narrow down specifically what you might be looking for based on that. And then we do also have a variety of more filters here. So similarly, you can search by a room if you're looking for a shared situation. situation. Um, we do allow uh, people to search by sublets as well. Um, and then you can also search Oh, sorry, my internet is a little um, a little tricky right now. Um, but you can also search by lease information. So if you're looking for something that's shorter term versus a longer term lease, you can narrow down listings that meet that criteria, as well as distance to campus, um, transportation options, pet policies. So um, if you have a dog or a cat and you want to see listings that will allow you to bring your pet. Um, a variety of unit features, um, so uh, as well as community features. So if you're looking for a place that has utilities included um, or um, you know a pool or something like that, you can narrow down listings based on that, as well as the laundry situation, um, security, so whether it has deadbolt locks or security system. Um, and you can also narrow it down based on listings um, that might be more convenient for um, graduate students versus undergraduate students. So all of these filters are going to narrow down the search results that you see here. And then you can also, as, as you're using the map-based search, also overlay um, campus bus route options as well as public transit options. So not only can you see where properties are in relation to campus, but you can also actually overlay the bus route so you can see if a property is along that particular bus route. Um, if you are looking to um, commute to campus uh, through the campus bus route system or public transit. So you'll be able to see where those bus stops are. You can also overlay a variety of other information um, such as restaurants, grocery stores, coffee, uh, banks, shopping. It's going to get a little overwhelming because there's a lot of uh, restaurants in uh, Atlanta, but you can also then uh, take a look at each pen and see what is close by to that property. I'll show you a little more um, how you can utilize those points of interest when you're actually um, looking deeper into a property listing, um, because I think it's a little bit easier to do it that way. But um, just really helping you to understand where properties are in relation to campus and where you'll be on campus. You can obviously zoom in and zoom out um, to see specific areas of campus as well. Um, but really just to help give you high level information about what the options are. And then what you'll see here is um, the search results will narrow, narrow based on those results and then placards will feature high level information such as distance to campus as well as what that price range is um, for those particular units. We do also, so you know, include, um, you'll see mostly multifamily properties here on the um, left-hand side, which are going to be your uh, more traditional apartment communities, um, luxury communities. And then on the right-hand side of the results, you're going to see shared listings, houses, um, you know, those independent owner listings that we have um, as well. So you're going to see a variety of options as you narrow down those results. And you can also just very easily sort um, by closest to campus or lowest price if you prefer to look at listings that way. And then when you're looking to find out a little bit more about a particular property, you can click into that listing for more information. 
you're going to be able to see property photos. You can scroll through those specifically. We do include uh, floor plans and 3D Matterport tours. Um, so if a community has um, these Matterport tours, these will also be integrated into the platform. So you can actually uh, walk through the unit as if you are there. Uh, which is really great just to give you a sense of uh, what it feels like to be within that unit even before you may actually be able to tour that particular property. And then as you scroll down, it's going to tell you distance to campus as well as um, if it is an apartment community, it will show you all their floor plan options. Um, obviously, if it's a single house, it's just going to be that one uh, floor plan. And then they can um, include a specific floor plan if they have multiple here so you can see square footage, um, what the rent is for that particular unit. And then a variety of other information, um, such as lease terms, expenses, whether um, you know, there are one-time upfront expenses or recurring expenses will be included. Um, the property will also include you know, description, their office hours, um, and then a lot of other amenities that are included with that particular property or that particular unit. And then some information about parking, pet policy, the details around that particular pet policy, um, as well as um, transit, uh, public transit that is close by, parks and recreation, airports, um, as well as secondary information um, for schools. So um, if you have young children or um, you know, looking to understand what the school, where that property is located and what uh, your school options are, then you'll see these here, which is pulling in information from great schools. And then we've also got our integrated uh, map here and map tools as well. So we sort of saw that on the housing search, but this is actually where I prefer to use it. Um, if you go in, you're going to be able to zoom in and out um, and really see what, you know, where is the nearest grocery store? Where is the nearest restaurant? What are those options? Where are those bus stops? Um, so you have a better sense of what's around that particular property location. And then we also have information um, about how easy it is to get around that particular neighborhood that the property is in. So a walk score, um, bike score, sometimes you'll also see transit score for public transit, and then information about the internet speed options that you have as well, as well as providers uh, based on where that property is located. So then once you have um, conducted your search and narrowed down some properties that you're interested in reaching out to, you can um, log in to uh, send an email through the website or you can call that property directly. And then you can also view information if they do have a website as well. Um, you're welcome to check that out for some additional information. Uh, but we really do try to include as much information about a particular property within that listing detail page as we can so that um, you're informed bef way before you ever reach out to that property about whether that would be a good um, option or a good fit for you based on what you need in your, your housing situation. All right, and then you can easily favorite a listing to come back to it later um, as well if you need to. And the platform itself is mobile responsive. So if you are utilizing this from a mobile device, um, that's totally fine. Everything will work um, and function just like it does on desktop. All right, and then diving into the roommate section. So this section is gonna be closed um, just for um, Emory uh, students that have um, an emory.edu email. And so when you get to this section, um, this is where you can narrow down other potential roommates that you may wanna live with. And you can do that by a variety of quick filters that we have on the right-hand side. Um, so you can search by affiliation, graduation year, um, you can search whether somebody has a place or needs a place. And then we also have an advanced search. So you can also search by different um, timeline needed, behavioral preferences, study preferences, um, as well as affiliation and uh, school or program. So you can actually search by the school of law um, and narrow down other students in your program as well that um, might be a good fit for you to live with. And then results will um, filter based on that search. And um, once you're ready to learn a little bit more about a particular student, you can click into their profile. Um, and they, um, when you create a profile, you're actually able to link to your social media handles if you like. Um, you can upload a photo if you'd like, as well as a 
short description about yourself. And if a student already actually has a unit, um, so it might be a shared situation or a sublet, um, you can actually view their listing in the housing section, um, just like we were viewing the other listings. So you can get more information about that particular uh, listing, which is really great. So you can actually see um, not only who you would be living with, but the information about that particular property as well. So that can be a great way to connect uh, with other students. And then there will also be information on the roommate profile about um, what their perfect roommate would look like and um, a little bit about themselves. So what's important to them, what's not important to them, um, do they study you know, uh, in the home or do they go to the library, that sort of thing to really just help you find um, good potential matches. And then similar to the housing section, you can then reach out directly to that student. Um, you can favorite their profile to come back to it later. Um, and uh, start the conversation there to determine if it might be a good fit. All right, and then we do also have an educational resources section um, as well, which is just going to include um, high level information um, on campus resources, um, you know, local resources as well uh, for you that you can take a look at as you're moving off campus, just some things to think about, um, as well as help you better understand the Atlanta market um, and what to expect as you're moving off campus. And then last but not least, um, we do have a help section on our website. And um, this is a place where, you know, if you need help resetting your password or um, have some frequently asked questions, um, you can take a look at uh, what we have in this section. You also can always reach out to us. Um, we do have a um, customer support team uh, that will answer the phone or you can email um, and they can help you uh, further navigate your search and the website if you have specific questions. Um, and they're always happy to help um, as you're starting your search and really trying to narrow down options um, that will meet your specific needs. All right, so I do want to open it up for any questions. That's a very high level overview of the service, um, but it is a really great resource for you as you're starting to search um, to help narrow down not only housing options, but uh, roommate options as well. Great, so we had two questions come in. So I'm going to okay. try and get uh, Arissa and Daniela up to see if they can ask their questions. They were okay. memory specific questions, so I'm happy to take those. Okay. Um, if anybody else has any questions, um, please type them in either the Q&A function or in the chat box, and we'll be able to, uh, to get to those all. I see some other ones coming in. Please keep them coming in. We've got a lot of time here for questions, so we can spend the rest of the time uh, answering your questions and um, getting you all the information that you need. Um, so Arissa, you were able to, to get that first question in. So um, you wanna go ahead and ask a question for the group? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm not muted, correct? Yeah, you're good, we can hear you. Okay, um, so when I did, I did a study abroad a while back and they had a satellite campus and I didn't realize. So I had, made my apartment close to the main campus and then I got there and they were like oh my goodness you have to go an hour across the city mm -hmm. so is that a thing that could happen with Emory where I plan my route you know to the buses to get to main Emory and then you didn't know that contracts one is across Atlanta you know anything like that yeah yeah no that's a that's a great question I know universities could be particularly challenging to navigate sometimes um, at Emory, the, the law school is on the main campus. And so anything around that main campus is fantastic. Um, one thing students do potentially get confused by is they also see there's technically a second campus, which is the Claremont campus, um, but it's literally less than a mile away from the main campus. It's our residential campus, mostly for the undergraduates. So there are some public bus lines and Emory bus lines that go around the city or around the neighborhoods that will drop you off on Claremont campus. Um, but it's probably a 15 minute walk from Claremont campus to the main law school building, or there's other shuttles as well that go between the Claremont campus and to the, the law school building. Um, the law school is actually, I would say fairly uh, more accessible uh, because we're on the edge of campus actually. Um, so we're right on the corner of North Decatur Road and Clifton Road kind of split the campus so we're right at the beginning 
which also means there's not only the Emory shuttles, but a lot of MARTA buses, which is the public transit here in Atlanta as well, which go along North Decatur Road, which is a pretty main uh, thoroughfare throughout Atlanta. So um, this is a long answer just to say, no, you won't be on any satellite campus. You'll be on the main campus. So as you all are looking for housing, you can just search around that Emory uh, main campus and you'll be perfectly fine and good to go. Okay, thank you. Of course. Okay, so next up, let's see, let me get Daniela. Hey, Daniela, how are you? Good, how are you? Um, Good. So I noticed that, Tiffany, you said that once you have an Emory uh, email, you have more access to the off-campus site, um, like more things you can do with it. So I was wondering when we would get those Emory emails. Yeah, so your Emory email will be accessible to you after you paid the second deposit. So once you pay the second deposit, that's when our system will actually recognize you as a student committed to and attending Emory. Um, so once that date hits, you'll be able to get your NetID login for that Emory email. Um, and we'll, we can send you instructions on that as well, but it'll happen after that second deposit. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Good to see you. Okay, so um, next, let's see if we can get up uh, Hope. So I'm gonna bring Hope up. Hope, how are you doing? Hi there, I'm pretty good. Uh, the internet here is a bit spotty. You sound can you great. you guys hear me okay? Yeah, okay, you sound great. great. Awesome. Um, I was wondering what is the neighborhood or intersection of neighborhoods that Emory law falls into yeah tiffany would you actually mind bringing up the map yeah, um, search option to, to show um but yeah you're correct it's it's druid hills is the neighborhood um but there's Great. a lot of different areas around the campus um i just want to make i want to see if we have the map and i think that would be a more visual instruction for you so so yeah you can you can see the outline uh, of the campus there um You've got Druid Hills right there, which is that um, main area. Um, if you zoom out a little bit, there's mm -hmm. there's a couple popular neighborhoods that students will look at. Um, you'll see yeah, if we can zoom out just a little bit more. Oops. Well, too far. <laughs> uh, yeah, so actually that's good. So um, directly to the the southeast is a smaller city called Decatur. Um, downtown Decatur is a fantastic location that a lot of students live in. Uh, it's extremely walkable. There's a giant square there that has a lot of shops and restaurants and food shopping and everything's kind of right there. So if you like uh, walking and bike riding, it's a fantastic place to live. Um, I actually lived there for the first few years that that I moved here to Atlanta. It's a, it's a really great place. Um, up north, you've got North Druid Hills, um, which is also another great area. Um, there's a bunch of apartment complexes and some homes. Um, and Executive Park is also a neighborhood that's right next to it. Um, that's owned by Emory, um, just directly north of campus. So there's a lot of good options there as well. It's also right next to uh, 85, which is the main highway in and out of Atlanta. So if you're planning to go home or maybe take some weekend trips. Um, it's a great way to easily kind of be in and out of the city without too much traffic. Um, if you look and you to said the, sorry, go ahead. That's that's Emory. I'm sorry, Executive Village, Executive Park, Executive Park. Thank you. Yep. Um, and there's a shuttle line that goes right to Executive Park. There's also a shuttle line and a MARTA bus line that goes to North Druid Hills. Uh, same thing for downtown Decatur. There's an Emory bus line as well as the Marta bus line. So super easy to get back and forth. I took the Emory shuttle back and forth every day between downtown Decatur and the campus. Never took me more than 10, 15 minutes, even with traffic. So um, they're not too bad. Um, if you're looking for more of the kind of Atlanta experience and, and being in the city, um, that would be kind of to our southwest and directly west. Um, so directly west is Midtown. If you want the full Atlanta experience, you want to be in the high rises, you want to be in the middle of the city, you get more of a Manhattan feel, that's a, a great location. Uh, it is a bit more expensive because you're in the middle of it all, um, but that's a, a great option as well. Um, and then 
directly south, you've got Virginia Highlands, you've got Edgewood, Kirkwood. Um, they're a little bit more residential, um, but they've got a lot of great locations there and it's pretty easy to get to campus through bus lines as well. So um, those are the those are the ones that I would recommend. Um, like I said, we'll, we'll send out an email as well that has all of that information and, and recommendations there too. But you've got a bunch of different options. Druid Hills is great, but there's also a lot. Um, and like Tiffany showed you, you can kind of bring up the bus lines and it'll show you exactly where all that is. Awesome, thank you so much. Could I ask a quick follow-up question? Of course. So um, when I worked in uh, Buckhead, I actually found it much faster um, to commute there from East Point rather than, which is farther away uh, toward the south west of the city than I did when I lived just two miles away um, in the west side midtown area. Do y'all have any recommendations for um, hacks like that that are routes that aren't necessarily neighborhoods that are particularly close to campus but that are a little bit um, more of a consistent commute? Yeah, um, we can definitely send some other recommendations. I think anything you're looking into the west or southwest and those more Atlanta neighborhoods are going to be more variable in terms of traffic. And when they come in, um, that North Druid Hills area, the downtown Decatur, it's pretty, pretty consistent 10, 15 minutes on a bus or in your car and, and you're there without much of a hassle that way. Um, so I would say anything you're going towards Midtown is going to have that variability um, in there with traffic, but um, to the north and to the southeast should be, you know, relatively consistent and pretty affordable. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Excellent. Okay, so let's move on. I think we're going to go, let's go to Tate next. He had a, a question. Tate, how you doing? Let's see, Tate, can you unmute yourself? Are you able to? Okay, no worries. Um, we'll, we'll come back to you, Tate. Um, if you're able to unmute yourself, feel free. Um, in the meantime, let's go over to Caleb. Caleb, how are you doing? Uh, hi, uh, I'm doing good. Uh... So I had a couple of questions. I actually put them in the Q and A. I apologize. I thought that's what we were doing. Um, yeah, no, you're good. I so, saw I saw a couple in the chat and the Q and A. So feel free to to go ahead and ask a few of them. Yeah. So I wanted to know where the where we would apply for the graduate housing, if there was any, what the process is like, uh, who qualifies for that? Does like law school students? Um, are they involved? Uh, are they allowed to apply for this? And what is like the chances of getting into that? Yeah, so graduate housing is extremely limited on campus. Um, most students are not going to get it. There's, I think there's literally maybe like 20 rooms um, and I haven't seen any law school students get it. They are actually building new graduate housing, um, but I'm not sure that will be done by the time you all graduate. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that route. If I'm being honest, I would use this off campus housing website and live off campus um you're you're going to get a place and it's going to be um much better but if you are curious about it send me an email i can send you a bit more detail got it thank you um and then my second question was where can we like find the maps for the shuttles because i know shuttles go to different uh, apartment complexes uh is there like a, a map of that yeah that was actually the one we were just on that um tiffany can probably demonstrate that again just to show where those those shuttle lines are yeah. Like it's integrated into the um into the application or into the the mm -hmm. the off campus search like it'll show uh where the bus lines are, correct? Correct. Oh, okay. Yep. That's great. Thank so you. So you'll have these um as well as public transit. So you're going to see sort of a mix here. Um and then you can choose. I mean, you can select all of them if you need to see mm -hmm. all at one time. Um, but it's going to automatically then populate on the map. Um, and then you can specifically hover over the bus um, bus stop and see specifically what it's called as well. Okay, got it, thank you. 
Excellent. Any any other questions, Caleb? While we while I got you up? Uh, no. You you answered that question. That was what I was looking for. Was where it is on because, yeah. <laughs> Great. Excellent. No, it's all good. Good to see you. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for asking a question. And Anthony, I did want to add one thing uh, based on one of the uh, original questions that we had. So um, obviously, once you have your emory.edu um, email, you can register for a student account. Um, in the interim, when you register for that guest account, um, there is a way if you do need access to that roommate finder um, sooner than that, that you can, um, if you're a newly admitted uh, law student and you haven't um, gotten this information yet, that you can reach out via email. Um, and um, get an access code to get temporary access. And then once you have your Emory email, you can upgrade your guest account to that student account. Excellent. Yeah. So you'll be able to start this search right now. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and then as Tiffany said, you can upgrade to that Emory email once you have it as well. Um, excellent. I'm going to go back to Tate's question. Tate, sorry, I just saw the, uh, the message you sent about being at work. So no worries. Um, I can I can ask your question now. Um, so Tay was wondering, um, and Tiffany, maybe you can speak to this. But what's a what's a typical timeline for when a lot of these rentals become available, and is there a time that you see that maybe they get a bit more limited? Yeah, it definitely will fluctuate um, based on the time of year. So I was actually pulling up some stats for the site just to kind of get a sense, because generally uh, when we see a certain peak season, that's really when you're going to see most of the rentals um, and most of the students using the service. Um, so it looks like for you all, that really starts um, around now and starts to build through the summer. So um, you should be seeing more options becoming available. Um, and landlords will update um, their information. Um, they should be updating it pretty frequently, um, especially the apartment communities. Um, we actually have um, a, a variety of feed providers that we use for them to make sure that as their pricing and availability changes, it's updating on the website in real time as well. Um, so you will see it update daily. Um, so certainly if when you first initially start your search, you're not seeing anything um, that meets your specific criteria, I would definitely keep checking. Um, because there's going to be um, availability and whatnot changing daily and definitely starting now, um, really into those summer months. And then generally we'll see it kind of start to taper off a little bit um, August into the fall um, semester as well. Um, and typically that time from fall to the holidays is when we see less uh, listing inventory and sort of less um, activity on the website. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what what we hear from students as well. Um, you know, the nice thing about being in Atlanta and being in a, a large metro area is there's always going to be something for you to find. Um, but the the greater availability of options will definitely be over those summer months. I think most students end up securing that through June and July, um, and and you'll should be fine for for that time period as well. Um, Excellent. Um, so I'm going to bring up Josh. Let's see if we can get him up. Josh, how are you doing? Hello. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. How are you? Great. I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you both for this presentation. Very helpful. Um, I wanted to ask a quick question about the bike friendliness of Emory's campus and the surrounding Atlanta area. Can you speak a little bit about the infrastructure, the roads, if there are bike lanes, if, if people choose to cycle and commute? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Tiffany showed you some of the apartment complexes and how they'll have the scores about bikeability in terms of the surrounding neighborhood. So that's a good resource. Um, campus is super bike friendly. It's really easy to get around. There's a huge bike rack right outside of the law school. I know a number of actually faculty as well as students take their bikes into campus. Um, I think it depends really where you live. I would say if you're within a two to three mile radius of campus it's relatively easy to get back and forth um if you're going to like downtown or midtown atlanta i mean i guess depending on how adventurous you like to be for me personally i probably wouldn't bike too much around there um but a lot of the other neighborhoods around it and the smaller cities around campus are very bike friendly um you'd be able to to get in um, I think that's one area that Atlanta is growing in. It's not really known as a bike city, um, but a lot of the small towns, there's a program called the PATH program where, you know, they're building all these bicycle lanes and sidewalks and everything to make it more pedestrian and bike friendly. 
Um, but I would say if you're in the Druid Hills neighborhood, um, even in the Decatur area, you're probably fairly easy to bike and get around. But as you start getting towards more of the Atlanta side, I think it gets a bit more difficult. Great, thank you. Um, is the area relatively hilly or flat? It's pretty hilly. Yeah, pretty hilly. Um, you, you, your quads would definitely get a workout on the bike. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, great. And then, um, is it difficult to have a car as a as a commuting option? And how how's the parking situation on campus? And can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's actually a, a, a great follow up. Elise asked a very similar question in the the Q and A. Um, Parking on campus, um, Atlanta is a big car city. Uh, you'll you'll notice that when you're here, um, but it's it's definitely possible to get around without a car. Um, I spent my first two years here in Atlanta without a car, did all my food shopping and everything on the bus and and made it perfectly fine. Um, Emory has shuttles as well that go to, there's a Publix run and a Kroger run as well on one of the shuttles. So it's possible to get around and do all that um, through public transportation for sure. I think it's nice to have a car because there are areas of the city where it's just easier and more convenient to get around in the car, especially if you're going to go out to some of the different neighborhoods, um, you know, areas like, say, Buford Highway, which has a lot of great restaurants and shopping and that you really need a car to, to get there. So um, we, we would recommend a car, but it's certainly not necessary. You, you can definitely survive without it um, in terms of the parking options on campus. Um, I actually really like how Emory um, has the parking situation here on campus. Uh, it's one of the better ones I've been at at the universities that I've worked at, uh, mostly because it gives you flexibility. So you'll have the option to buy a parking pass and you'll have two different options within that. So you'll have the annual pass. Uh, I believe it's $390 per semester. So you're looking at um, just about a little under $800 for the entire year of parking, which is I guess sad to say, but it's not terrible for campus parking rates or even city parking rates. Um, but they also have uh, like a flex option as well, where um, if you're only on, if you know you're only going to be on campus, say a couple days a week, it's six dollars a day, and it caps at fifty six dollars a month, um, and you only get charged for when you actually swipe the pass to get into the parking garage. So it can be a little bit more flexible. So if you know you're not going to park all the time, um, that's a great option. Um, parking on campus is also completely free. All of the garages are open. Even the permit ones are open on weekdays after 4 p.m. and on weekends all the time. Um, so you have those options available for you as well if you're going to be on campus a little bit later or you need to go to the library on a Saturday or Sunday, um, you'll be able to park for free there. The parking garages, there is one directly next to the law school. That's a really easy walk. Um, it's really hard to get into though. The law school uh, shares that with both the hospital and there's another office building on the other side. So it's, it's actually really hard. There's a lottery that students can go into to, to get a spot in there. Um, we only get like 200 spots out of the whole garage. So it's, it's fairly competitive in there. Um, but there's the um, Fishburn deck and the Michael Street deck, which are within 10 minutes walking of the law school building that have plenty of parking and are on the main campus that you can get into. Um, there's also a huge parking deck that's basically unlimited parking on the Claremont campus that I was talking about. Um, so you could also park there. And then there's a shuttle that goes from that parking deck. It drops you right in front of the law school building. It's less than five minutes on the shuttle and they run every 10 minutes. So it's, it's really easy to get. Um, so that's an option as well. So if you need to park, you need to have that. Um, it's fairly convenient and, um, like I said, kind of relatively cheap in terms of you know campus situations. Thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. All right, I didn't see any other questions come in. Oh wait, hang on. I think we got one more. Um, Cool, excellent. Um, so, Arissa, I'm going to bring you back up real quick. I think that's a that's a good question as well. If you want to ask that for the group, uh, right? So, I'm looking at the academic calendar, and it looks like our start of term is the 15th. Um, is there anything that happens before the 15th that we need to be physically in Atlanta for? When when would be the latest day that we could move in? 
Yeah, so that's that's a great question in terms of everybody's planning timeline. So you are correct, the law school does start one week before the main campus. So we'll start on that week of the 15th. Um, that does mean that our orientation and our welcome week schedule is gonna start that previous week. So I would plan to be physically on campus and at the law school prepared for orientation on Monday, August 8th. So that's the day that I would kind of work back from. Our general recommendation is to give yourself about two weeks before that date to make sure you've got everything moved in, get to explore your neighborhood a little bit, go out to Atlanta, just kind of feel like you've got all of those things settled, you're unpacked, you've done your laundry, you've got all that good to go and you feel ready to go um, for that first week of class. So um, I would say end of July, I think is a decent time frame for you to be aiming here. But you know, if you got here that weekend of, of the sixth and the seventh, I think you'd still be okay, depending on you know how you are and moving in. But yeah, I would plan to physically be on campus on Monday, August 8th. Right, thank you. Excellent. Well, I didn't see any other questions come in. Um, but of course, if you have other questions, you can always email us. Um, we're happy to make connections and uh, give you any other information on, on getting it. Like I said, we'll be sending out an email in the next few weeks regarding, um, you know, uh, more instructions on using this site, using our housing guides, some recommendations. We'll include those dates uh, and parking information as well. So you have all of that coming your way. Um, but like Tiffany said, you can go on, you can create your guest account right now and kind of play around and see what's available, see what fits your budget, your lifestyle, uh, all that. We know housing can be an important part. It's an additional cost that you have to consider as well in, in attending school. So anything we can do to, to help you and um, provide recommendations, please don't hesitate to reach out uh, and we're more than happy. So we'll go ahead and end our session here. Um, thank you all again for, for taking the time and joining us. Thank you, Tiffany, so much for your uh, demonstration and, and helping our students kind of navigate the website and everything. That was super helpful, so we appreciate it. Um, everybody else, like I said, hopefully we'll see you this evening for the Florida alumni event uh, or for our Barton presentation on Friday afternoon. Uh, as always, if you have questions, let us know. Um, welcome to Emory, and we'll see you all around at other sessions, but have a great day. Thanks.